So, here's a picture of the new shifter. And here's how much slop there is before it actually moves. That's all movement before the actual rod actually starts moving. And the reason for that is twofold. One, the original shifter uses a ball which fits tight in a plastic socket. This uses a bearing on each end of these, these trunnions across the frame. And you can see that this section, there's a, bit, there's a round bearing mounted inside each of these. You can see how the block actually moves a little bit. So there's some slop in the mechanism at the pivot. The other thing is that the cable moves quite a bit before you actually get movement from each side of the of the uh, shifter at the back of the transaxle. Now, if you move the back of the transaxle, which I'll do in a second, you'll see how far it can move. So here, the movement is right around a quarter of an inch down there, but the distance to the shift knobs about two and a half times, I would say. I'll have to measure it from the pivot to the knob versus the pivot to the cable mechanism. So the movement down here is effectively two and a half or three times as far up here at the knob. As you can see, it moves quite a bit. There's that much slop in the mechanism. Everybody can see at the back that this is how much slop there is. So for this much movement here, which I would say is only, well, maybe 40 thousandths of an inch, We're having, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch here. So that movement here versus there is made up in the cable shape distorting in the big long curves. 